Hello everyone, welcome to Kaviation Engineering YouTube channel. So today I'm going to uh, teach you pack component uh, description and its location. So if you are still new to my YouTube channel, I am Keshara Vikram Singha. So uh, today is the lesson number 10. Uh, today we are going to discuss about pack component location and description. So um, if you still not subscribe my channel, uh, please subscribe and uh, you can see the previous videos. So uh, it will be useful for you. All right. So um, yeah, so let's go to the lesson. All right. So in this lesson, you will identify the location and the description of the pack components. All right. So in this lesson, you will identify the location and the description of the pack components. Right. So this is the pack. You can see the right hand air conditioning pack over there. All right. OK. So the first one, the pack controllers. Pack controllers, they have uh, two pack controllers, primary and secondary. All right, so you can see the forward avionic compartments, pack temperature controller over there. All right, so this is the location. All right, so, uh, okay, so this is the location. See the rack 90 VU. All right, see the pack component functions, like, uh, the primary and secondary. This is the flow setting modulation. Uh, the primary will do and secondary will not do. And the pack temperature control from zone controller demand, primary also, secondary also. So bypass valve control, ram air flow modulation, and overheat detection and indications, pack temperature control to 15 Celsius, and failure analysis, bite and into transmissions to the zone controller, ECAM indications, anti ice valve control, data handling. So you can just go through this graph, all right? Okay, so let's go to the next one air conditioning packs, right? So this is the air conditioning pack. You can see this is the pack, right? So this is the condenser, and this is the water extractor, this is the reheater, and this is the primary heat exchanger, main heat exchanger, this is the plenum chamber, right? So, uh, right, so you can see the water injection, uh, water uh, injectors over there, and this is the location, right? So this is the location, all right. So, uh, the air conditioning packs are identified as pack 1 and pack 2 depending on the pneumatic manifold to which they are connected. Alright, so uh, you can see this is the live uh, view, I mean the actual view, right? Okay, so let's go to the next one, third one, flow control valve, right? So, flow control valve, this is the location, flow control valve. So, here is the flow control valve, right? So, here is the uh, pneumatic actuator is over there, pneumatic actuator over there, and these are the pressure connections to flow sensors and uh, inside they have the butterfly valve and electrical connect over there right so this is the special locking screw all right so and this one see the bleed air, uh, bleed air inlet so bleed air is coming from this way and this is the solenoid over there right so the flow control valve this is the flow control valve all right so and this is the uh, actual view here the uh, packed flow control valve over there right so the flow control valve has two functions Flow control valve has two functions in the air conditioning system. Their primary function is to control the amount of air flowing through the system. The primary function is to control the amount of air flowing through the system. The secondary function is to provide an automatic or manual selectable shutoff function. All right. Okay, so let's go to the fourth one, the flow control valve removal and installation, right? So removal and installation, you can see the same place over there. Right, see the flow control valve is connected via V clamps to the bleed air duct on one side and the heat exchanger duct on the other side. Right, so you can see the flow control valve is connected via V clamps to the bleed air duct on the one side and the other side heat exchanger duct. Okay, right, so you can see this is the V clamp over there, this is the mounting. Right, so the, this is flow control valve and this is the heat exchanger ducts from one side is connected to the heat exchanger duct and other side is connected to the bleed air duct all right okay so let's go to the bypass valve so you can see uh okay right so this is the bypass valve okay so here the temperature control bypass valve over there so this is the uh diagram okay so the location over there right see uh this is the electrical connector for the bypass valve and this is the actuator you can see from the black color this is the actuator and this is the valve body and the flow is going through from this side see the flow is uh, the direction and this is the manual override see the bypass valve is electrically controlled and actuated by a stepper motor and the limit switcher signals fully open or fully closed positions 
to the pack controller secondary computer the pack controller primary and secondary computers receives a step counting signal used for the bypass valve position determination and a manual override and visual position indicator device is installed on the bottom of the shaft all right okay so this is the uh, manual override and visual position indicator device is installed on the bottom of the shaft right you can see over there all right so let's go to the next one ram air inlet actuator ram air inlet actuator this is the location and this is the ram air inlet actuator here is the rod and this is the actuator and this is the electrical connector and this is the ac motor depends on the supply right so this is the uh, actual view ram air inlet actuator over there so the ram air inlet actuator has an ac motor electrically supplied by the pack controller right so there is a ac motor it is electrically supplied by the pack controller two different motor supply and the two limit switches one for the close position and the other for 70 percent open position the signals for the secondary computers and the two potentiometers one for control to the primary computer the other for indications to the secondary computer all right okay so let's go to the next one this is anti-ice valve so this is the anti-ice valve right you can see the anti-ice valve here here is the location anti-ice valve so this is the actual view right anti-ice valve over there right see the anti-ice valve condensed sense lines these are the condensed sense lines okay and these are the delta uh, pressure relays delta pressure relays over there and this is the manual override and this is the uh, pneumatic sensor sense line solenoid pneumatic sensor sensor sense line solenoid okay the anti-ice valve is electrically controlled and pneumatically operated this is important just remember anti-ice valve is electrically controlled and it is operated by pneumatical right so anti-ice mode valve energized in anti-ice mode valve is energized and the valve opens of ice is detected across the high or low pressure side of the condenser and the pneumatic temperature control mode valve de energized in pneumatic temperature control mode the valve is de-energized the valve is controlled by the pneumatic sensor to get a fixed temperature it means 15 celsius or 59 fahrenheit all right okay now let's go to the pack downstream check valve pack downstream check valve here is the pack downstream check valve location okay this is the uh, uh diagram okay you can see the this is the check valve over there right so the pack downstream check valve is of the single spring loaded flap type remember the pack downstream check valve is of a single spring loaded flap type directly bolted to the pressure bulkhead it is directly bolted to the pressure bulkhead it stops leakage of air if the pack is switched off right just remember now it's going to the air cycle machine this is very important yeah, this is the air cycle machine so this is the air cycle machine diagram you can see the turbine outlet over there and hot air inlet for anti-ice and temperature control this is over there duct and turbine inlet duct so compressor discharge this is the compressor discharge i go through for this side and the uh, air cycle machine hot air pressure bypass uh, direction uh, duct over there right so this is the compressor inlet compressor air is go through from here and this is the fan housing and these are the uh, bearing ventilation these are the bearing ventilation these are used for the bearing ventilation and this is the compressor and tapping from Papping for air bearing ventilations compressor over there, right? Okay, so the main component of the air cycle machine is rotating shaft. Remember, the main component of the air cycle machine is rotating shaft. A turbine, a compressor, and a fan are mounted along the shaft, right? The shaft rotates on two self acting foil air bearings, and a double self acting air thrust bearing takes the axial thrust loads, all right? okay so this is the uh, actual view air cycle machine okay you can see all right so now let's go to the primary heat exchanger primary heat exchanger the location is there see you can see the primary heat exchanger so this is the primary heat exchanger you can see the cooling air right so the uh, cooling air come from uh, here right these are the cooling air inside the cooling air and this is the bleed air duct bleed air inlet right sorry bleed air inlet and this is the bypass air is coming through from here and this is the bleed air outlet this is the bleed air inlet and this is the bleed air outlet right you can see the live view this is the primary heat exchanger over there so the primary heat exchanger is of the plate and fin type with a single pass cross flow configuration and it cools the hot bleed air before it enters the air cycle machine compressor right so the cooling agent is ambient ram air the cooling is ambient ram air right 
okay so let's go to the next one main heat exchanger main heat exchanger over there you can see this is the main heat exchanger and this is the primary and this is the main heat exchanger or same this is the cooling air and this is the bleed air outlet over there and this is the bleed air inlet so the main heat exchanger is of the plate and fin type with the outer flow counter flow configuration and it is installed between the air cycle machine compressor and turbine right so the cooling agent is also ambient air all right okay so now let's go to the reheater right so the location of this uh, reheater is here right so this is the reheater this is the hot air inlet from the main heat exchangers come from here and this is the cold air outlet to turbine inlet and the hot air outlet to condenser right so this is the cold air inlet from water extractor right so this is the uh, actual view this is the reheater you can see so the reheater is of the plate and fin type with the single cross flow configuration and it is uses turbine inlet air to further cool air leaving the main heat exchanger all right okay now let's go to the condenser so this is the condenser location and you can see the graph condenser this is the packed outlet and from the turbine outlet is come from here and this is from the reheater and this is to the water extractor so here is the actual view uh, the condenser right so the condenser is of the tube type with a single pass cross flow configuration and it cools air leaving the reheater below its dew point all right so this causes the moisture in the air to condense into droplets and water is then removed by the water extractor all right okay let's go to the next one the 14th one water extractor here is the water extractor location right you can see this is the water extractor right so this is the water extractor dry air is go to there and here the wet air is coming from here static spiral veins right? these are the spiral veins from this uh, spiral veins it's turning to uh, cold air turn into hot air so sorry so the water feed lines to the injectors right water feed line to the injectors so the spiral vanes centrifuge the water droplet these are the spiral vanes on over here so, uh, spiral vanes centrifuge the water droplets into the inner surface of the water extractor body right so the water is then drained into the water injectors all right okay now let's go to the water injection this is the water injector so this is the live view right inside the ramya right so uh, these are the water injectors so here the location is over there right so the water injectors are installed in the ramya inlet duct remember water injectors are installed in the ramya inlet duct upstream of the heat exchangers the water from the extract is delivered under the pressure into the ramya flow to increase the cooling capacity all right okay so next one is the last one ozone filter it is an optional one right but uh, most of the aircraft they have ozone filter this is the ozone filter and this is the location you can see the ozone filter the graph right so same so the ozone filters are installed upstream of the flow control vac right ozone filters are uh, filters installed upstream of the flow control vac all right so uh, that is the end of this lesson so uh, i think you got to know about the location and the description of the components in the pack uh, packs right air conditioning packs so uh, the next lesson uh, you will going to learn about the description and the location of the pack sensor components right so stick with my channel you can learn about the i mean the learn about the description and the location of the pack sensor components in the next uh, video so uh, if you still not subscribe my channel uh, please subscribe my channel because it will be a, a motivation for me then i can make more videos for you and because of that you can learn more about the 320 so uh, and also if you uh, like this video and if you're interested about this video please hit a like button and also don't forget to press the bell icon then you can notify the new videos uh, and also please share this video with your friends relatives anyone who interested interested with aviation i mean especially for the aircraft a320 aircraft all right okay so we will meet on next lesson have a good day for all of you